This is Gene Delisio with a featured sports interview from WDLB and WOSQ. Mickey Vandehey of Auburndale was one of the premier high school athletes in central Wisconsin in the early 1960s, having great success in football, basketball, and baseball. Mickey scored 1,537 points during his high school basketball career, helping Auburndale to a four-year record of 69 wins and 15 losses, including 21-1 in 1962. In football, Mickey played quarterback and helped Auburndale record a 24-6 and record in four seasons, including 8-0 in 1962 and 21-3 during his final three seasons of football. Mickey was best known for his baseball skills, leading Auburndale to the WIAA State Tournament in 1963 and then signing a pro contract with the Chicago White Sox. For his efforts on the diamond, Mickey was inducted into the Marshfield Area Baseball and Softball Hall of Fame in 2013. Hey, it was a lot of fun, and I think it's a a great idea, and uh, I always thought this area was special, and uh, the people here really seemed to enjoy it. He certainly had a great career at uh, Auburndale with the Marshfield Legion baseball team. As uh, you look back on your career here in this Auburndale, any highlights, any things you think about that really stood out for you? Well, you know, it was, uh, I enjoyed all the sports, you know. We had, uh, we had a lot of success. Uh, we had a, a great core of uh, athletes in my class. We, we hung together. Uh, we played all the sports together. And it was pretty common in a small school, uh, mostly farm kids. Uh, not an ungodly world of talent, but really kids with great work ethics. And uh, we were pretty successful uh, because we played together and, uh, and had great coaches also. And you, of course, had a great career at Auburndale in several different sports, but uh, baseball perhaps you're most known for these days. Tell us about some of the exploits you had on the baseball field in Auburndale. Well, we um, Auburndale has always been a real good baseball community. In fact, they won the state tournament uh, when I was in eighth grade. John Bauer uh, pitched them to the state championship, and that was quite an accomplishment because it was all one class uh, we we played uh, we played a lot of schools that were bigger than us uh, I can remember playing Wausau High School uh, we played Kenosha High School we played uh, schools that you know that were I guess you know had a few thousand kids to our 250 or whatever and we were uh, able to beat these teams or come very close and uh, we were never intimidated by, you know, the size of the school. You could only play so many players, but uh, we didn't win all the time, but uh, we won our share. Growing up, as you mentioned, you were in eighth grade when Auburndale won that state championship. John Bauer pitching Auburndale to that state title. As an eighth grader watching that team and growing up in that community and experiencing that, what did that mean to you, and how did that help you develop as a baseball player? Well, we played... Uh, we played a lot of different games, you know. I used to play rubber ball with John. We'd pitch when, you know, he'd be the, he'd be one team and I'd be the other. We would do, we had our own way of keeping score, and we could do that for hours and entertain ourselves. Plus, we didn't really know we were sharpening skills and but we were we were learning hand-eye coordination things, uh, hitting a hitting a little rubber ball with a little bat, <laughs> and uh, and we enjoyed it. And we, so we kind of always made a game of it. And when John had this success, I wasn't all that surprised because uh, you know I, I knew he could uh, he would do well with no matter for what the classification of high school was. He was he was the best pitcher out there. Can you talk about your coaches at Auburndale and what they meant to your development? Well, I had uh, great coaches, and I also had a great principal. Uh, it, Bob Hubert was, uh, he guided me and he guided a lot of kids. A lot of kids uh, really respected Bob, and uh, uh, he would he would get, get after you, but you knew that he was right and you were probably wrong. Uh, I had a great uh, football coach in Buck Bronkerst. Uh, he he came 
one thing Auburnville didn't have was a good football program. They were good in uh, good in baseball, probably was the best, but football was not so much. And he came in, and I think the f- I was. I guess we were down so far that I started quarterback when I was a freshman. Never played a game of formal game of football. It, we went on to, uh, I think we were one game away from winning the conference championship. And then the second year, uh, I think we went, uh, we lost one game. I'm not sure if, uh, if it was a conference championship game or not. Third year, we were undefeated. Fourth year was a tough one. We got... Uh, a real good ball player, Ralph Boris, broke his leg in uh, preseason. I stumbled and hurt myself, and and it kind of was a downer for, you know, you have high expectation. We played a lot. Of, we had a tough schedule. We played in uh, Marshfield. We played in Stevens Point, and those are Valley teams, and we're, we're 200-odd kids trying to, you know, compete with those guys but we could compete with them we beat Marshall we tied point and and uh but things didn't things didn't uh, go our way that year but that's life had a great basketball career as well tell us about that well basketball was uh we we did we never lost at home uh we I I tell you the truth I'm not so sure we lost a home basketball game the last three years they played but uh, we were in, we we were in contention for the conference championship. I don't remember. I know we won it once, and then uh, we we had a good coach, Raleigh Larson. Uh, we, again, we didn't have a, a super abundance of uh, talent. We would figure out ways to score. Uh, I, I had a. A very good arm, and and I was a pretty good rebounder. And we used to leak a guy out to half court, and I used to, at times, kind of flip it over my head uh, to half court, and he could take it in for a layup. And so we had to, we had to find ways to score. And then again, our senior year, Ralph, with the same broken leg, tried to play basketball, but that's tough when uh, you depend on you know jumping ability. And but we battled and. Uh, it didn't t- go our way at the end, but uh, you know we had we had a lot of fun and, and we were successful. And you had some great success in baseball as well. Tell us about that part of Armandale High School. Well, we uh, we we played. Uh, it was all one class back then, and uh, we played. I can remember first time I was a freshman. I came in relief against. Uh, I think we were playing in our games in Junction City. Uh, but I got in uh, against Wassa, which was a good ball club, and I had some success. And uh, we played. Uh, uh, you'd run up against Point in a tournament. And uh, I, our junior year, our junior year, we went to the state tournament. But unfortunately, I had hurt my an arm, hurt my arm uh, in the regionals, and we got to the state tournament, and I just. I couldn't do it. I, I tried for an inning. We were playing Kenosha, and uh, we got behind. And I was playing, I don't remember where I was, probably left field or someplace. Uh, I stayed in the game playing right-handed. <laughs> and, uh, and we had a chance to win the game in the, in the end, the last of the inning. And, and you remember these things, I took a call, third strike, and all I had to do was swing the bat, and I, I saw the pitch so clearly. But you remember those things, but uh, it's, you know, you can't have everything go your way all the time. I had immense success. I had uh, a lot of support from from uh, people in the media, especially Bob Stevenson uh, uh, at, at the News Herald. He was everybody's best fan. I mean, what he did with that paper, and and I don't know how many games he saw every night, but he had had write-ups of the games, pictures, the whole ball of wax, you know, no computers, no nothing. And uh, it was a different different time, but it was fun. Ricky, there's been a... Uh, people have asked me about this. As long as you're sitting here, I'll ask you. 
but there's been I've been asked several times about supposedly the double header when you won one game right handed and one game left handed. I've heard that several times. Can you talk about that if that ever happened or what the circumstances were that that to started? My knowledge, it never happened. Uh, I might have pitched in. I did quite a bit of pitching right handed. I mean, I wasn't very good at it, but uh, sometimes. Uh, I could do it. In fact, I did it in the when I got out of when I got out of high school. I went and played out in South Dakota in a in a college league, and my co my manager out there had me had me play right. I played left field, right handed, every night, and every fourth day I pitched left handed. But he made me pitch right handed. Sometimes if we the game was we were far behind her he was he uh, he did to do some crazy stuff and I did pitch right-handed but I don't remember ever winning a game with either hand uh, I, I don't that never happened well that's been a rumor that's going on for many years I'm glad you could tell us about that authoritatively you were talking tonight about the Marshfield American Legion program tell us what that meant to you as well oh that was total fun that was uh, great great friends we did some goofy things but we beat some really good teams. We played some really good teams. Uh, uh, the Eau Claire game was the best baseball game I ever was involved in. Uh, they were defending state champs, and they'd won the high school championship. And and uh, Eau Claire is a really good baseball town. It always has been. And I honestly didn't think we were had a chance to win, but we ended up beating them one to nothing. And I pitched a no hitter, and the guy. I think we only got two hits. I think we scored because the guy stole second. The catcher threw it in the center field, and the guy scored, and that was it. But we had the trips. Uh, the trips were fun. The kids kids were uh, somewhat well behaved. I uh, I the 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 manager Dave Kepke, uh, some of the other guys that hauled us around road trips and uh, made it fun. Uh, we used to stop and see how many 15 cent hamburgers you could eat at McDonald's and and uh, that was you know we didn't, didn't get to do that very often uh, get out on the road and uh, but the most fun was playing with uh, kids from other communities I just saw a couple uh, Pete Mansell uh, and uh, 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 what's it, uh, Lutke from uh, Spencer and I hadn't seen them in 20 years but those were friendships that came out of uh, Legion Ball, and I, I still would love to see some of those other kids. But we've all gone our own way, and I don't get back here very often. But uh, it's hard once you, you know. Uh, but you never forget the memories, and that's what the events like this are about: are, are memories. You know, it's a, it's a time to reflect and. You know, you saw, if you got here early, there was a lot of laughter and a lot of how you're doing, what are, you know, where you live. Uh, it's a good good feeling. Tell us about signing with the White Sox, how that came about. Well, I, I, I went out to the college league, and uh, I ended up being second in the league in hitting. I was the only high school player there. And I was supposed to go, I was planning on going to University of Illinois to play football. And uh, we didn't have very much or very many financial resources. Uh, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what would be the best choice. I know I, dis I disappointed uh, people at Illinois. Uh, they offered me quite a bit of money, and they included uh, four years of school paid for. So I kind of thought I had the best of both worlds, but uh, those are tough decisions. And uh, boy, it sure would have been nice if it w you know you could have played more than one. You know, I would have loved to got a chance to to do that. And, but once you were signed, you were done with any other sport, which it's not like that now. But uh, uh, you know, they they came at me with a good offer and. Uh, I, uh, I guess I wanted to get on with baseball. And looking back, I don't know if I would do it all over again. I think, uh, I think a kid from a small school 
really benefits a lot from college. If you can go, if you can go to college for four years and you stay, I don't care what kind of success you've had on the football field, but you are going to have have to learn a lot about life and and responsibility. And and I kind of wish I would. I think I probably would have needed that. I should have taken advantage of that. But boy, those are tough decisions when you're 18 years old. You did spend several years in the White Sox organization. How did that go for you? Well, it was a funny, I really had a funny career. I was during the Vietnam War, and uh, I was going to college in the off season. And so I had to stay in school, miss spring training. I missed half the year. Uh, And then I I ended up, I only played half a year, and... uh, another half a year and then I get drafted in service so then I'm out uh, 21 months of active duty got out and that's when they switched I, I switched from hitting first base to pitching I told them I, I really like to pitch and I did and a very my arm was great felt just and I got a major league contract from uh, I started pitching in July and I pitched July August and and went to winter ball with a major league contract and uh, I hurt my arm right away I tore my rotator cuff and I didn't know it they didn't know what a rotator cuff was no MRI no nothing but it was it just was there and it never went away and of course I I've continued to pitch for off and on for a year but it, Gradually, it got worse and worse, weaker and weaker. And then finally, it was over. I said, go back to school and get my degree and get on with it. And I never played baseball after that. As you wound up at Augusta, had a very strong career there as an educator, as a coach. Tell us about your years at Augusta. Well, we liked, uh, it was a small school, uh, much like Auburndale. Uh, had great, uh, not great success. Had, you know, it wasn't... Uh, a real big basketball town but uh, you know we had uh, you had to make do with sometimes a little less and be competitive Uh, I I always thought if you know if they're well coached we'll win our share but you know we couldn't contend with uh, some of the other schools Osseo was a lot bigger than us and they had they had had some good talent there in Whitehall and and we had we would win some and and uh, but I enjoyed the, the coaching. I thought I'd I honestly very proud of the uh, you know some of the 500 teams we had. I, I don't th- I've never had a losing season. A lot of teams, a lot of seasons, 10 and 8, uh, 12 and 7, and some some bet a lot better. But I wish it would have been more often. But still, uh, you know. Sometimes 500 is the best you can do, and if you and if you realize that, you know, then you're going to be you're going to be pleased with yourself, and you can. Well, Mickey, anything else about tonight and the festivities you'd like to tell us about? Well, I just uh, it was it was a good idea, and uh, it's a I got a chance to see some of my buddies from Auburndale, and uh, the neat thing was uh, my big brother coming in at the same time and. He's going through a, a rough time right now uh, medically, and uh, I've always looked up to him, and he's, to me, the best baseball hitter I've ever seen in amateur ball. Uh, great hitter he was. And uh, there's another guy that was a great coach, and really much, much the same as, as I explained earlier. Never won a state championship, but, boy, his kids, uh, they played ball. And I th- it's, it's good that somebody's doing things like this, you know. Uh, who knows? Maybe it maybe it'll uh, catch on other communities because I think baseball needs a little kick in the hind end a little once in a while. We used to have, you know, two teams in Auburndale. Two there was two teams in most of these little towns. We have a town in the River League and town in the County League, and people came out to watch. And now everybody sits around. And, watching TV and kids don't learn, you know, much. Uh, we made games. Everybody grew up in that area or in that era. You had to make 
you know, you could practice yourself, you know, and make yourself better, batting stones, uh, whatever. Everybody that strived to be good did things like that, and I think some of that's lost. And and when the adults do something like this, hopefully a few kids will pick up on it. Former Auburndale High School sports standout Mickey Van De Hay inducted into the Marshfield Area Baseball and Softball Hall of Fame in 2013. This is Gene Delisio reporting for WDLB and WOSQ Sports.